truth seems like a simple concept to apply. Seems like a easy understanding reality to apply to our lives. Something that's easy to know, something that's easy to live out. The balloon is red. Or is it? Seems clear, but not so fast, some people will say. That is a pretty yellow balloon. That balloon is blue. From over here, that balloon looks purple. Like the people in the video and the experience that the lady had, we all live by our own set of truth or truths, some type of filter, some type of something that guides the decisions that we make that shows itself in how we live our life from day to day. Sure, there are some truths that might be true for you, but not for me. You may say, Rocky Road is the best ice cream. I will say, no, 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 it's cookie dough all the way. You may say, vegan all the way. I will say, give me a great steak any day. You may say, Batman is not the greatest superhero ever. And I will look at you and say, do you even know Jesus and walk closely with him? <laughs> right? We all have our own sets of truths. And there are these truths that are more opinion-based. There are these truths that are based on preferences. But the kind of truth that we're talking about today, the kind of truth that we're going to encourage kids to seek this week as they seek truth and find Jesus, but as we talk specifically this week about seeking truth, we're not talking truth little t, we're not talking the preferences, we're talking truth capital T. What is the truth that's there? This is important because there is a certain way that reality works. There is a certain truth capital T to things. If you think of life like a puzzle, there's a big puzzle picture, but it has all these pieces that are a part of it, all these things that we make decisions on that guide our lives. And if you ask 10 different people what they believe is the truth in these areas of life, and you've got life and money and singleness and God and sex and marriage and parenting and all these other things that maybe you didn't think to put in the puzzle, or all these things that we have not yet discovered as we continue down the journey of life, we find more and more things. And so you ask 10 different people, and you're going to get, just like the lady in the video, you're going to get a wide variety of answers and responses, and many of those are going to conflict with each other. You believe one thing about a particular area, and someone says, hey, that may be true for you. It's not true for me, but bro, more power to you if that's what you want to believe. Some people will say, hey, different strokes for different folks. Some folks will say, hey, that's fine if that's what you want to believe. Just don't try to push that on me. But as long as you don't try to push it on me, it's whatever you want it to be. Hey, we're all heading to the same place. We're just taking different paths to get there. Or the one that's more common nowadays than any of those I've run across is, hey, bro, you do you. And on and on and on the responses can go as we try to figure out what is the truth, capital T, to the puzzles, these areas of life. Because one of the things we know to be true from common sense, from logic, from experience, is that all truths, capital T, can't be equally valid. They can't be equally true. For example, look, look at the life piece of the puzzle. Either my life has a purpose and it has a meaning, or it doesn't. But it can't have a purpose for me and not have a purpose for you. Either life in general has a purpose or it doesn't. Either my work, no matter what my profession or career may be, or my retirement can be used to bring honor and glory to God, or it can't. But it can't be both of those things. Either sex is designed to work a certain way within certain boundaries and perimeters, and not other ways in its design, or anything goes and you can do whatever with whoever, whenever you want. Either there is a God, or there's not a God. But it can't be both of those things. Truth, T, ultimate reality. Either there's something that happens after this life, or this is as good as it gets. But it can't be both of those things. It has to be one or the other. So common sense, logic, experience dictate that there is an ultimate truth, T, regardless of what we may think. So the question becomes this, where do we go to find that truth? Where do we go to find the answers to these areas of the big picture of life? 
Well, I'm so glad you asked, because that's what we're going to talk about today. If you have a Bible, Genesis chapter 1 is where we're going to be. Well-known Bible verse, well-known passage. So if you have a Bible on your phone or a physical Bible on site or online, I encourage you to, to open up there, Genesis first book in the Bible. And while you're doing that, let me just say this. Before we read it, let me address an objection that some here in this room and some joining us online will have as we begin to get into this. And the question is simply this, why, Bill, and listen, this is a legitimate question for some, why, Bill, should I believe what you're fixing to tell us? Because, well, you're reading and expounding upon the Bible, but I don't believe the Bible is the ultimate source of truth. I don't believe there is a God. And again, that's a legitimate question. So let me say two things to you preemptively as we kind of get into this. First of all, uh, I would ask that you not tune out the next 15 or 20 minutes in what we're going to talk about, because we are going to drop some truth, capital T, to you. And so I don't want you to miss that. But secondly, let me say this, and I challenge you and encourage you in this. If you go to our church Facebook page or our church uh, YouTube page, you'll find a video section. If you'll click on that videos section, there are one, maybe two videos there that I would encourage you to watch this week if that's you. The first is, uh, well, both of those relate to a Wednesday night study that we're doing called Sherlocking the Bible. And in the first video that we played a couple of weeks ago that we did, it's 30 minutes on here's why we believe this is the Word of God, why we believe that this is truth, how we can know. Because there are a lot of other quote-unquote holy books that are out there that also claim to be truth. So why do we believe this book? How can we know? So we spent about 30 minutes giving three reasons about why we can know this is truth the truth, the Word of God. And then the second one, if you're interested, there's another 30-minute video there that will explain how we got this book, how we got these 66 books, and what about the books that got left out and all that. So if you're here and you don't believe in God or believe the Bible is the Word of God, that's, that's fair. So, so I, I would encourage you to go back and watch those videos to answer that question. But if you will, I would uh, beg you to um, humor me and play along and not tune out for the next 15 or 20 minutes as we talk about this truth, capital T, in Scripture. So let's read Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God. Very simple phrase, but rich with meaning and with application. The original audience that this was written to lived in a culture that was full of a wide variety of people groups, a wide variety of cultures. They encountered a wide variety of belief systems about God and gods and about the meaning and the purpose of life and about how things are supposed to work and how we are to interact with each other and how we are to interact with these God and these gods and what is the ultimate story of reality. So those are the questions they had. And so God led Moses, the author of our text, to write the, down the history of Israel and write down the things to the questions that they had and they needed to know the answers to. Questions, if you're paying close attention, are not that different than the questions we have in the 21st century. Though we're thousands and thousands and thousands of years removed from this original audience, the questions are not really that different that they had than that we have today. So Moses writes and he tells them quite a few things, but there's two things in particular we learn from this phrase, in the beginning God, and one thing that we learn, that they learn also, is that this God that created things is a person. It's not a thing. It's a being that can be known, personal, one you can have a relationship with, that how they got here and how we got here was not just some random chance of events, but it was by the design and the will of the God who created everything in the beginning, which leads to the second thing that we learn, and that is in the beginning God, which means before there was a beginning of time as we know it, God existed, which means God is over and above all things. That means God is over and above time. God is over and above history. He is outside all of those things. He can see the beginning and the end and everything in between all at once because he's over and above those things. So he is in control of all of those things. But this great God is one who can be personally known, one that you can have a relationship with. He is knowable. He created out of nothing, and because he did, he is God. He is the ultimate source of truth, T. So what did this noble God do? Well, in, this, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. 
What that tells us, what that means is not only did God create time, but he created everything. He is the ultimate designer, capital D. He is the one who put everything together. Let me say that again, because that is going to be the driving force that's going to lead us to the answer of where to seek truth, capital T. God is the creator of everything, which means he is the ultimate designer, capital D. So why is that important? Why is that crucial? Why spend our time breaking down, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth? Well, it's crucial because it tells us that there is an ultimate source of truth, and it tells us where to find the truth. The implications of that are many, one of which means I'm not the source of truth and you're not the source of truth, that truth is not dictated and set by my preferences, by my thoughts, or by my opinions. It means that when the majority agrees on something, that doesn't necessarily mean it's truth, capital T. It means when there's a very vocal minority who claims something to be true, that doesn't make it automatically a capital T. It doesn't mean might meets right. It, it doesn't mean that just because I saw it on social media, just because it's on Facebook, or just because it's on Twitter, or just because it's on Instagram, or just because it's on TikTok, or just because it's on a web page somewhere floating around on the internet, that it's true. What it means is that God is the ultimate source of truth. And if those things reflect the ultimate truth, capital T, whether it's the majority or the minority or something on social media or the internet, then it's true as well. But if it conflicts, no matter what it is, if it conflicts with the ultimate truth that we find in God and that we find in Scripture, then it's not really true at all. It's just one person's feelings or their opinions. This has some really massive implications for what I believe and how I live my life day to day. If you go back to our uh, life puzzle that we had uh, with all, all the different pieces, with all the different things, it means I don't get to decide what is ultimately true, capital T, in any of those areas. I don't get to decide what's true, capital T, about life or money or singleness or marriage or parenting or God or sex or work or how money is to be spent or anything that we can fill the blank in in the puzzle pieces of life in each of those areas. I don't get to decide that. The one who gets to decide that is the one who created the heavens and the earth. He is the ultimate designer. Now, I do have the choice that I can ignore that or I can live by that truth. I can live by that truth and experience things the way that God experienced them, uh, designed them to be experienced by and large, as much as I can since sin has corrupted things. Or I can choose to reject those things. I can choose to ignore that truth, try to live by my truth or some other person's truth. But what I'm going to find is a lot of frustration, a lot of dead ends, and ultimately I'm going to find some serious consequences in those areas as well and have a lot more difficulty than God would desire for me to have. It's no secret if you've ever been in my office or been around me much, I love Legos. I love to put together Lego sets. They're just puzzles for big kids, I guess. I don't know, but they're a lot of fun. And so if I open up a box of Legos and I dump it out, there's a bunch of individual bags and there's a set of instructions. And at that point, I have a couple of options one is I can throw those instructions aside. I can open up all those bags and dump them out, and I'll have 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 pieces of Legos. Some of them will be bigger pieces. Most of them will be very small pieces, some of them as big as my thumbnail. And I can begin trying to figure out how to put that together. But spoiler alert, if you never put together Legos, I'm going to be extremely frustrated, and there is no way I'm going to get to the end design that's on the box. It is going to be impossible because there's so many pieces and so many connectors. If I want to end up with the design that was intended for that Lego set, I'm going to need to follow those instructions as the builder step by step. Because why? Because I'm just the builder, man. I'm just playing it out. I've got the pieces in front of me, but I don't know how they go together. If I don't know how they go together, I've got to look at the instructions put together by the designers, by the creators, by the engineers. And truthfully, even sometimes that may not be so easy. I was doing a build a couple of years ago on one that was uh, just under 2,000 pieces. It took me two weeks to put it together. And uh, there were a couple of times I almost threw that thing against the wall. I did, I confess, say some Christian cuss words if there is such a thing. And there was probably a couple of for real cuss words that slipped out too somewhere along the way. Because even though I had the design and the instructions, it was still frustrating from time to time. 
but I'm much more likely to get where I'm supposed to be with the design of the build if I follow the instructions than if I go my own way. As a matter of fact, as someone who has built, an, I don't know how many Lego sets, I can just tell you there is no way I'm getting to the end product even on a small Lego set if I don't have those instructions and if I don't follow those particular things. Go back to our puzzle areas. It's the same way. The same as there is a design to the Lego sets, there's a design to life put there by the creator. But when I go my own way, when you do you, instead of doing things the way the creator asks you to do that, lets you know that there is a design and how those areas are supposed to play out, you'll find yourself wildly frustrated. You'll find yourself wildly out of sorts. You'll find things going not the way that they were designed to go. And ultimately, there will be some serious consequences potentially in this life. But if not, for sure in this life, you will experience that in the life to come. Because there is something more after this life. And that's the truth, capital T. Now granted, much like with the Lego build, even when I followed the instructions, it didn't always go as I had hoped it would. And there were times where I had to just stop because I got frustrated and things didn't go like I thought. Jesus said, it is going to be a hard, difficult road to follow him and to follow the capital T truth that he has set before us and live according to his design in all these areas of our life. But he does promise that he will be with us and that it will be worth it in the end. So I ask this, whether you already have your faith and trust in Christ or not, where are you in relation to seeking truth, capital T? Where are you in that journey? If you're with us on site or online and you're not yet a follower of Jesus, let me remind you of something I said a couple times earlier because it's true. Common sense, logic, experience show us, dictate to us that all truths are not equally valid. There is such a thing as truth capital T. There is a design to things. There is a way that things were supposed to work, and it was put there by the God who created the heavens and the earth. So if that's you, my, my encouragement to you, really what I would beg you to do, if you're not sure where to begin, is go back and check out that first, maybe even that second video that's available from the Wednesday Night Sherlocking thing that we're doing that just helps explain why we believe this truth, uh, this book is the revelation of truth as opposed to some other things that are out there that also claim to be truth. Let that be your starting point. And from there, once you see why this truth can be trusted, this revelation of truth, then that will help you better understand why we believe there is a God and aid you in your journey in finding the truth of Jesus. The reason this is so important is because this book tells us a story. It has a lot of, a lot of small stories in it. But ultimately, this book tells us one story from beginning to end. And the story is this, that as Moses says right here in verse 1, God created the heavens and the earth. He created everything, including you and I. And the story, the grand narrative of Scripture, what it tells us is that God created us for a relationship with Him. And He wants us to be in relationship with Him. But we mess that up. There's a thing called sin which is just rebellion and disobedience. When God says, this is the design and how things are supposed to work. And we go over here and we go our own way and we do our own thing and we live by our own truth, thinking that we know better than God does. And that sin, that, that rebellion, that disobedience fractures our relationship with God. And so though God wants to be with us, we're not in relationship with him. Because the Bible says, God is holy and we are not and, and, and oil and water cannot mix. And holy and unholy cannot mix. And so God wants to be in relationship with us, but the sin hinders that. And the Bible says there's nothing that we can do about that. Because it's not about being good. It's not about being bad. It's about the fact that God is holy and we are not. So something has to take care of my sin. Something has to remove that sin barrier. But I can't do it on my own. So there's two options. God leaves us all to go to hell and be separated from him forever. Our God steps in and he fixes our mess and removes that barrier. And in the person of Jesus, that's exactly what he's done. The Bible says, paying the price for sin, Jesus died and rose again. And that anybody who puts their faith and trust in Jesus, who is the way, the truth, capital T, the way, the truth, and the life, 
then the Bible says they have a relationship with God. They are forgiven of their sin. They enter into a relationship with Him. And the Bible says we now have what is called eternal life. That now I have a new purpose and a new focus and a new meaning in life. That now I can begin to live by the design and the Holy Spirit begins to work in me to line Him up with me more and more and more. Sorry, line me up with Him more and more and more in those areas of my life. So I become to look more and more like Jesus. But it all starts with putting faith and trust in the way, the truth, and the life. And I have that eternal life that doesn't just begin when I get to heaven in the presence of God, but begins from the moment that I put my faith and trust in Christ. So if you're here and you don't have a relationship with Christ, that's your starting point today. And that's what I would strongly encourage you to give some time to think about and think through because the capital T truth is the time on this earth is only a, a small part of what I am created to experience. There is a whole other side on eternity that will last forever. And listen, there are a lot of important stories that you're gonna hear throughout your life, but I, I guarantee you there is none that's near as important as the story that we hear right there because that is the story that points me toward eternity and toward forgiveness and salvation that I so desperately need. So if you're here and you don't have a relationship with Jesus, I would really encourage you toward that. But for those of us who are here on site, online, and who already have a relationship with Jesus, our quest for truth doesn't just stop when we find Jesus. In fact, it really is kind of the beginning of this quest for truth because now that we've found Jesus, I have found the way, the truth, and the life, but now there's this design that I'm made aware of of how I'm supposed to live out every area of my life. And so I begin digging into the Word, and I begin praying, and I begin Bible studying, and I begin going to small groups and Bible studies and connect groups and listen to sermons and worshiping and all these things where the Spirit teaches me and begins to move me from living out my truth in my daily life to trying to line me up more and more and more the longer I'm in relationship with Jesus. The Spirit transforms me to line me up more and more with His truth in those areas of my life. So the challenge for those of us who are believers is to look at that puzzle and to examine our lives and all those different pieces and say, okay, what areas of my life am I lining up with the design, with the truth that God wants me to live? And I continue to give praise for him in that, that he has brought me along in those areas. And I take the areas that I am not living well or living at all according to his truth and his design, and I ask God to give me wisdom and strength and the spirit to transform my heart and my desires so that the, the longer I live, the more his truth matches my life. And I let that become the authority of my life. Because the truth is, if, is, for those of us who are believers, if you and I are going to be the salt and, light, uh, salt and light to a dying, lost world that Christ has called us to be, we have to be well-versed in Scripture, in truth. That if you and I are going to be who God has called us to be in holiness, then we have to be well-grounded in His truth. If you and I are going to be not tossed about like a ship in a storm for every belief that comes our way. We're going to have to be well anchored in Scripture. We're going to have to know what the truth, capital T, is. I'm going to have to move from living off my preferences and my opinions and my own thoughts into living a way that is by the design of God and the way that He has revealed things to be. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Do you know God? Do you know his truth? If you don't, my encouragement to you is to seek him. Seek out the truth. There are some answers to the big questions of life that can be known, and we would love to come alongside you and help you with that. One of my favorite things to do is to sit down and talk to people on spiritual journeys and walk them through these elements of Christianity and introduce them to Jesus. So if you don't know him and his truth, we would love to point you toward that today. This week, call the office, respond in just a minute with action to 94,000. There's an option on there about that, and we would love to have the chance to visit with you about that this week. If you do already know Jesus and you have a relationship with him, give thanks for that salvation and that revelation. But I would encourage you, be sure as you live your daily life, as those different area pieces of the puzzle, be sure, be open, be aware of the areas where you do line up with his truth and his design and your beliefs in your life, and also others where you don't line up with his truth and his belief in those areas of your life. Listen, here's the thing. God doesn't expect us to be perfect. We never find in Scripture he expects us to be perfect. 
but he does the more we walk with him, the more he expects us to